What's happening everybody? My name is Michael Hampton and today we're talking about the Kogan 200 watt meat and food slicer. We'll talk about the pros and cons and who I think it's suitable for. Now at the end of the video, we'll get this thing in use, and we'll make some beef jerky and I'll show you two recipes. So this meat slicer was $79.99 delivered from Kogan. It has a 19 centimeter stainless steel threaded blade. Adjustable cutting width up to 15 millimeters. Non-slip suction cup feet for stability. Sliding holder for the meat. Power switch with the safety lock. Pros. The price. This thing's $79.99 and you can't get much better than that. All the other ones were over $100 and they looked about the same quality. Ease of use and setup. This thing pretty much came assembled like this in the box. Just had two foam packaging things on the side. Just pulled them off and there was protection for the blade. Pull that off and it was ready to go. Easy cleaning. Removal and cleaning of the blade is pretty easy. Just pushing the button here, twist it, blade pops straight out, and it can be washed in the sink or in the dishwasher. Goes back on, twist, push that back down, done. Removal and cleaning of the slide tray is really simple. You just pull this lever, lift the slide rod up, slide the slide tray off, and that can just be washed in the sink, and you can wipe down the slide rod and all the machine here. Put it back on, it's just as easy. Slide back on the slide rod. Move the lever, put the rod back down. That's it. Compact in size. This thing's pretty tiny. Once you use it, you can just put it away in your cupboard and it doesn't really get in the way. Finally, safety. I normally freeze the meat and cut it with my knife, but sometimes it can slip and it's hard to get consistent cuts. This thing takes care of that. It cuts it at an even five mil spacing or whatever you would set it to, and it makes the job so much faster. Cons. The slide action isn't the greatest, but it does the job. The slicing measurement isn't very accurate. As can be seen here, I've got it set at five mil, and it actually is around three mil. Bed size is only 19 centimeters long, so it's a bit short for longer pieces of meat. The back plate's pretty weak and flexes a bit, so if you push too hard, you can actually change the adjustment of your blade depth. Who's it for, and would I recommend it? I'd definitely recommend this meat slicer. So this beef slicer is perfect for somebody just like me who makes beef jerky every now and then. It makes cutting the beef so easy, and the price was only $79.99. So it's not that much of an outlay for something like this that can help me keep my fingers and speed up time making beef jerky. Right, so let's actually test out this meat slicer and make some beef jerky. I've got two recipes today. One's a honey teriyaki recipe and the other one's a spicy recipe. So I normally freeze my meat for around four hours just to get it a bit firmer so that it's easy to slice. But straight away, first of all, we'll cut off all the fat and we'll go from there. Next step I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to slice it in half here. That way when we run it through the slicer, they'll be a bit thinner. Also, another thing to look for is to go against the grain. You can sort of see the grain here. That's with the grain. And if you cut that way, it'll be really tough. So we adjust the width until it reads six mil. A quick tip is to make sure that the meat's pretty frozen. And that way the, the slicer just cuts through it like butter. If it's not that frozen, it just mangles up and it's not that good. Okay, so we sliced up all our meat and now it's time to start making some beef jerky. First of all, we're gonna make that honey teriyaki recipe. Now I usually use a kilo of meat per recipe, but this time I'm just using 500 grams per batch. So that means that all the ingredients will be halved, but I'll leave the proper ingredients in the description below. So now we've got all our ingredients measured out. We'll just go chuck it in one of these bags. Close that up. Give it a bit of a shake. Just mix up all those ingredients. Put the 500 grams of meat in. 
then we'll shut that up. We want to make sure that all the meat separates so that all the um, all the marinade gets in there and gets around every piece of meat. Separate it all in the bag like this. Right on, for the second batch, we'll make the spicy beef jerky mix. Let's get into it. Same again for the spicy mix. Just chuck in all the powders. Now we'll give it a bit of a shake. Mix all them flavours in. Right. And now we'll put our 500 grams of beef in. We mix around, make sure we break up all the meat. So the Marinade gets on every single piece. Just a bit of air out of that. Just like the other one. Righto, now we've got both bags done. We can throw them in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours, let them marinate overnight, and then chuck them in the dehydrator once we're done. 24 hours later. All right, so the beef jerky is marinated for 24 hours. Now we're gonna put it in the dehydrator for eight hours at 70 degrees. So when we put it on, just make sure that we leave heaps of room between them so that the meat can dry properly. Also right, throw the lid on and marinate for eight hours. Eight hours later. Right, eh? So the only thing left to do is to actually try the beef jerky. Mmm. That's good. I like mine a little bit softer so it's easy to chew. Right, eh? So if this video was helpful anyway, hit that thumbs up button and thanks for watching.